Namaste everyone. Yes, the Holistic Education Group is back with a bang and better call it high. So you've been wondering, hey, Bakai, 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 what have they been doing? We've been getting better equipment, guys, better quality to better serve you. Octon Media has gone all the way. Thank you, Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. You showed up. You did your thing. Here we are. Guys, stay tuned. The topic for today as education in COVID, mainly we're focusing on your teachers. Ne? Like teachers are people too, guys. Have we forgotten this? Sometimes you go there and you forget, Torina, a teacher is also a person. Like they wake up in the morning, they eat breakfast like you do, they've got kids like you've got, they've got a household to run, they've got debts, they've got issues, and still they have to take on issues of about 200 kids and their parents. It's not easy, guys. It's not easy. So, I don't want to complain now. Hey, teachers mustn't get paid because they are not teaching. You think teachers are just at home chilling? Because when those kids come back to school, the lesson plans have to be prepared. The activities have to be prepared. Previous mark, previous work, I mean, has to be marked. A teacher has to know, Horena, where are the kids now? The level of education. Have they gotten enough information from the first term to actually cover and So let's be more considerate, ne? Let's think about our teachers and let's see them as human beings holistically guys holistic education and teaching and education in general is a triangle teacher learner parent so if one of those suffers then what's going to happen let's love each other holistically let's love our teachers and enjoy this episode i'm so excited we're back welcome back guys just a reminder, don't forget to subscribe Optin Media on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, the Holistic Education Group as well on Facebook. Be there with us, don't forget to subscribe so you always know when we've got new episodes out. Anyway, back to the topic. Teachers are people too. So there's been this whole controversy. Oh wait, disclaimer. I want to have a disclaimer. My opinions are my opinions. They in no way reflect the opinions of Octan Media or the department or anyone that's sponsoring this channel or the Holistic Education Group in general. These are my opinions as a teacher and a holistic educator and an artist all in one life coach. It's just, you know, a gathering from what I'm thinking, right? So, COVID hits. The teachers didn't expect it. You didn't expect it. Nobody expected it. Then, okay, fine. Schools are closed in a little holiday. Okay, schools are supposed to reopen, but it's a lockdown. So, schools can't reopen. Your teachers are trying what? Online options, see? They're trying to see what they can do when schools do reopen. Because they have no idea what's going to happen when the schools reopen. We don't know, maybe COVID's gone, maybe COVID's still here, maybe schools will be open under weird circumstances. They didn't know. They had to wait, just like you, for the Department of Education to let them know this is the protocol, this is what's going to happen. Sharp. So, they get all the information. Now the schools are opening, but social distancing, kids are supposed to have masks on. Listen, you have to desanitize your whole school. Listen, sanitizer are everywhere. Also, you've missed out on a whole term. Make sure the kids catch up on that term. The department also wants its report. Make sure these kids learn. They make sure these kids have marks. Look after their behavior. Look after their social problems. Look after them psychologically. Look after them. And now I'm thinking, what about your kids at home? Is your home desanitized? Are your kids okay? Because they're also going off to school. If, you, if you're not teaching your own children, they're going off to school somewhere. Are they safe? Do they have masks? Do they have sanitizers? What's happening? When, when did we stop looking at our teachers as human beings? Or as substitute parents? Because now when I was growing up, a teacher was a substitute parent. If you got in trouble at school, you didn't go home and go complain to your mom and tell them that your teacher will drown, 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 drown. 
You accepted that you made a mistake and you allowed a grown person to correct you. I'm not saying, well, hey, they beat us into line or something like that. But I'm saying, we have a culture as Africans where we respect our elders. That is us. We know our elders have lived. They don't only know things, they didn't only study things, they lived. There is no substitute for life experience. So our elders have this experience and they bring this experience with them and when they correct you, they know from experience that the path that you're walking will only lead you to a certain way. So, we don't listen. I mean, my generation was probably the first generation that really stopped listening. But what's the point if we're not listening to our elders? Because our teachers are our elders. Even I prefer the word educator, not teacher. It means that they're synonyms, but I prefer educator. So, this person knows your child. You leave your child with this person or these people, this group of individuals, from 8 o'clock in the morning until 3 p.m. And you think these individuals don't know your kids? We spend hours with your children. We know your children five days a week and sometimes Saturdays, if you're in matrix, sometimes Sundays. We spend seven days a week with your child. So why would you think we do not know your child? It's, it's really hard to give individual attention when you've got a room, a classroom full of 50 learners. And then you've got, what, six classes? I'm not a maths teacher, but hey, I'm not a maths teacher, 100, 200, 300, 400. 300 learners that you must give individual attention to. Whose lives you must make sure buffing, like you must look after holistically. You must also report to the department. You must make sure all your paperwork is in line. Teachers have pressures that nobody understands. Everybody was taught. Everyone was educated. Even your most educated person was educated by someone. We didn't just wake up born with all this knowledge. We had teachers to teach us. And then even now, we don't respect them. We don't appreciate them. How do you get up to go and yell and scream and beat up? Now we're at that stage where we are getting beaten up. And it's not even an uproar, you understand? So how do you even disrespect or yell at or beat up someone who's trying to give your child knowledge or try to give you knowledge? We're gonna keep emotional. Let's take a break while you subscribe. Ne? Yeah. Press subscribe. We're taking a break. Take a look at our more cool ad. Peace. Are people 
two. So there's been this whole controversy. Oh, wait, disclaimer. I want to have a disclaimer. My opinions are my opinions. They in no way reflect the opinions of Octane Media or the department or anyone that's sponsoring this channel or the Holistic Education Group in general. These are my opinions as a teacher and a holistic educator and an artist all in one life coach. It's just, you know, a gathering from what I'm thinking, right? So, COVID hits, the teachers didn't expect it. You didn't expect it, nobody expected it. Then, okay, fine, schools are closed in a little holiday. Okay, schools are supposed to reopen, but it's a lockdown, so schools can't reopen. Your teachers are trying what? Online options, see? They're trying to see what they can do when schools do reopen. Because they have no idea what's going to happen when the schools reopen. We don't know, maybe COVID's gone, maybe COVID's still here, maybe schools will be open under weird circumstances. They didn't know. They had to wait, just like you, for the Department of Education to let them know. This is the protocol, this is what's going to happen. Sharp. So, they get all the information. Now the schools are opening, but social distancing, kids are supposed to have masks on. Listen, you have to desanitize your whole school. Listen, sanitizer are everywhere. Also, you've missed out on a whole term. Make sure the kids catch up on that term. The department also wants its report. Make sure these kids learn. They make sure these kids have marks. Look after their behavior. Look after their social problems. Look after them psychologically. Look after them. And not thinking, what about your kids at home? Is your home desanitized? Are your kids okay? Because they're also going off to school. If, you, if you're if you not teaching your own children, they're going off to school somewhere. Are they safe? Do they have masks? Do they have sanitizers? What's happening? When, when did we stop looking at our teachers as human beings? Or as substitute parents? Because now when I was growing up, a teacher was a substitute parent. If you got in trouble at school, you didn't go home and go complain to your mom and tell them that your teacher would run, 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 run. You accepted that you made a mistake and you allowed a grown person to correct you. I'm not saying, okay, well, they beat us into line or something like that. But I'm saying, we have a culture as Africans where respect our elders. That is us. We know our elders have lived. They don't only know things, they didn't only study things, they lived. There is no substitute for life experience. So our elders have this experience and they bring this experience with them. And when they correct you, they know from experience that the path that you're walking will only lead you to a certain way. So we don't listen. I mean, my generation was probably the first generation that really stopped listening. But What's the point if we're not listening to our elders? Because our teachers are our elders. Even I prefer the word educator, not teacher. It means they're synonyms, but I prefer educator. So this person knows your child. You leave your child with this person or these people, this group of individuals, from 8 o'clock in the morning until 3 p.m. And you think these individuals don't know your kids? We spend hours with your children. We know your children five days a week and sometimes Saturdays, if you're in matric, sometimes Sundays. We spend seven days a week with your child. So why would you think we do not know your child? It's, it's really hard to give individual attention when you've got a room, a classroom full of 50 learners. And then you've got, what, six classes? I'm not a maths teacher, but hey, when they are born, 100, 200, 300, born. 300 learners that you must give individual attention to. Whose lives you must make sure, but fine, like you must look after holistically. You also report to the department. You must make sure all your paperwork is in line. Teachers have pressures that nobody understands. Everybody was taught, everyone was educated. Even your most educated person was educated by someone. We didn't just wake up born with all this knowledge. We had teachers to teach us. And then even now, we don't respect them. We don't appreciate them. How do you get up? 
to go and yell and scream and beat up. Now we're at that stage where we are getting beaten up and it's not even an uproar, you understand? So how do you even disrespect or yell at or beat up someone who's trying to give your child knowledge or try to give you knowledge? What well, make emotional? Let's take a break while you subscribe. Ne? Yeah. Press subscribe. We're taking a break. Take a look at our cool ad. Peace. like sanitizing options for your house are you thinking marking 50 papers or are you wondering are you worried if your family is safe wherever they are you're worried about both aren't you it's like has a bad day in it guys teaching is a calling let me tell you this the patience that teaching has taught me the psychology that teaching has taught me okay Jay, living your life in a good way. That's what teaching has taught me. Putting others before yourself. I mean, how many people do you put before yourself as an educator? Think about it. You put learners in front of you. Before you put yourself first, they are the learners you must consider. They are your colleagues that you must consider. There are the HODs. There's the department. There's parents. There's everyone you put before you put yourself first. But the question is, are you okay holistically first? Are you pouring from an empty jug? I mean, on a daily basis, and you try to do it in a, in a way where it will be exciting, it will be interesting, and you're watching these little beings grow from things that can't talk, clumsy little things to wild teenagers and if you're teaching for long they become adults and you are so proud and the next thing they're like teachers mustn't get paid the very same people eh? but anyway you must look after yourself holistically first how are you mentally how are you are you coping do you have stress do you have anxiety? Do you have depression? Do you, do you wake up every day excited or do you wake up every day feeling low and burdened? How can you pour from an empty cup is what I'm going to ask you again. You need to take care of yourself mentally. Do you have spa days? Do you, have, do, you do things that you enjoy? Eh? 
Do you sometimes just go for a walk eh? or do you have hours in a day that you have put aside for yourself? Maybe that is Thursday between 3 and 5. It's my time. Not parent time. You're not a parent. You're not a teacher. You're not a citizen. You're just you. You do the things that you love the most. Then chill. Watch television. Let your time. Be kind to yourself. Are you being kind to yourself? What words do you use to describe yourself? Hey, is your first word like, hi, impatient? Or are you always hard on yourself? Be nice to yourself. You try your best every day. You're not Superman, or you're not in the Avengers, you're not in the Justice League. But you're a human being. Love your family. Do you have time that you spend with your family? Do you have time that you spend with your friends? If you've got problems, are you seeing someone? Hasil but don't get embarrassed. Go see someone to help you mentally so you can cope. Also, are you upgrading your skills so you don't get frustrated in the classroom? Look, we're dealing with kids that have information. Mun, lemon, access. Whatever you're saying in class, they could be Googling. Whatever homework you're giving them, they've got options, like a digital option, so where they can check if it's true or not. So you have to be on top of your game all the time. So are you going to the workshops? Are you upgrading your skills? Are you learning to work with technology? My colleagues, chalkboard, we can see. Nako chalkboard if it is, nako whiteboard if it is. We are now about technology. Why are we still marking 200 pages when we've got apps that can do that for us? Can I look Google Scholar where you can download question papers and have them marked online? You've got so many options. Are you looking at them to make your life easier? My colleague, that is my question also. Are you checking yourself to see if you're still as passionate about teaching as you were when you started? Or is it time for you to venture into new avenues? Teaching isn't supposed to be a job that sucks the life out of you. It's not supposed to be a job. It's a job of givers. It's a job for carers. It's a job for people who are spiritually and mentally and physically like giving of themselves. That's what teaching is. And you don't do it for the applause. You don't do it for the kudos. You don't do it for the awards. You, you do it for the personal rewards. The ones that are happy. When you see a child prosper, that should make you happy. This is how passionate I am about teaching. This is why I felt I couldn't do it formally in the classroom. For my mental sanity, not for anything else. I get very emotionally attached, which is number one rule, don't get emotional. But I do, I get invested. I get invested in these kids and I want to know if they're okay holistically. I just don't want to give them activities and send them home and mark them and that's it. I don't want them to be letter number five. I want to know how are you doing? Are things okay at home? Are you okay? How's the stage treating you? I want to sit down and have sessions and ask them how are they doing? Like. So, Abona, I know we all want to do that as teachers, but it is what it is. You've got 200 learners, you've got 300 learners, you've got marking. If you're teaching languages, if you're teaching maths, get paper one, paper two, paper three, paper million. You have to mark essays as an English teacher. There's so much to do, but you have to be okay. Are you okay physically? You're at a job where basically you sit. Or you're standing stationary in one place. I mean, how much exercise do you get? I mean, how much oxygen is really pumping through your body, going to your brain, keeping you alert, keeping you... Do you run from class to class? Do you, do you walk or is it yo, kesaya classing? Do you live for a short break, a long break? No. Take care of yourself physically. How do you man? How exercising? I mean, living before COVID, guys, we're already losing interest in extramural activities. Netball, drama, choir, this, 
that hey, yeah, there are artists in schools. There are artists in schools who will be there, okay, let me start this group at your school. Or sports people who are like, let me start this group. But when we get there, as artists or as sports people, as whatever, and we ask them, well, which teacher can help me make sure these learners are enjoying themselves, make sure I'm keeping to protocol, making sure okay, I do not violate any rules. I understand you got work to do, but what about those kids? The extramurals. Do you know kids learn more from observing and doing than they do from learning and reading? We are with a very, we have a very visual generation right now. They want to see and do. They don't want you to tell them. They want to see you do it. So yes, yeah, sometimes they get to start running around with kids and whatever, but they appreciate you more. And you also get your physical exercise in. And let me tell you, there's nothing more fun than chilling with kids. I love it. You get a whole new point of view. You look at the world from a different point of view. Like they say, self-actualization, right? When you reach self-actualization, you must see the world through the eyes of a child. Meaning you must always be ready to learn. Just because you're an educator, it doesn't mean you know everything. You know it's a new generation. If you've been teaching for 30 years plus, you have to relearn. Even if you've been teaching for five years, you have to relearn. You have to keep learning. You have to keep upgrading because these kids, they are growing up faster than we can even keep up. They are being much smarter than we can keep up with. They are very technological. They are very interested in things that we didn't even think existed during our time. So I need you to take care of yourself because if you're good, the triangle is good. If you are good, the learner will be good and the parent will be good. And if the parent is not well, at least you are well enough to help the parent and the learner. I get it. We have to take care of ourselves, guys. Like, even like the colleagues, we have to take care of ourselves so we can take care of the children. Blessed are those with the gift to educate the youth. You are molding the future. That's what you're doing on a daily basis. from now. How the billions are going to be paid off. It will depend on this next generation. And who's in charge of making sure this next generation does not repeat the mistakes that we made, that our forefathers made. Not the educators. Don't go forgetting that you are also an educator. At home, you educate your child. You teach them manners, morality. That's your education. Don't take everything now and heap it on the teacher. We can't do that. I get it. That's why we've got a priest, we've got a doctor, we've got everyone who focuses on different areas. But a teacher tries their most to be everything. But you can't just throw everything at us. We are in charge of your child's academic success. When morality, teach your child some manners, teach your child about life, how to be a decent human being. That's your job as a parent to watch them grow into these beautiful adults. And the job of you, the teacher, and you, the parent, is this child here. The child, right at the top of the triangle, is the learner. We must make sure these kids are mentally, emotionally, spiritually, academically, financially, all the E's. Make sure they are prepared. Who's going to save this country? Who's going to save this world if we don't scaffold them, if we don't prepare them, if we don't motivate them, if we don't encourage them, if we're not there for them? What? And then Berikwata. Look at these kids now. How they respectful. Who taught them to be respectful? These kids now, they answer back. Who told them that you do not answer back to your, you, to your elders? Eh? Bara, little, 
we can't expect to let them as be like us. Has the name Tim Kalamasa, but guys, when we were born, times change, the children change. Hey, Abuna, at a certain age, you weren't doing certain things. It was expected of you. But this is not society right now. Talk to your child. Hakusana to the snacks. See. Hadisa niyo. Uditola internet. Uditola WhatsApp. Uditola Facebook. Uditola everywhere. I'm not saying invade your child's privacy. I'm not saying invade your learner's privacy. I'm saying be open. Be the teacher and learner can walk. Who's, who eh? Ah, be the teacher. Wait, tongue twister girl. Be the teacher ne, who learners can speak to. Who learners can open up to. Do not judge a child. How to be better. Kiwana. Guide them. If they want to ask you about anything, like I said, see. They just want us to talk to them. They are sad. They are angry. They are frustrated. They don't know what's happening because no one will talk to our kids. So guys, like I said, these are my opinions. This is how I feel with my worldly experience. I don't have that much like experience compared to a lot of educators out here. Mara, I think I can speak because I've been in the classroom, I've been outside the classroom, I've been a formal educator, I've been an arts educator, I've been, you know, and I do talk to these kids and let's just love them. Let's just tell them we love them. Let's just, well, we can't hug them now because, you know, hey. Mara, let's socially distancing love them. Let's give them social distance hugs, eh? Less than a new trend, social distance hugs. Next, so we can give our kids the love that they know. Next time we go para lebone strateng or opa para lebone kai kai or the acting out or whatever, try approaching them like, "Hey, ma, are you okay?" Instead of "Here we are," you know, because I wrote on my Facebook status, "Okay, our kids watch what we do, and knowingly or unknowingly." They incorporate that into who they are as a human being. If you've watched your father read a newspaper every Sunday, growing up, you're going to be that father who reads a newspaper or who's on his phone reading the news. Wabona. So the way you behave, the way we behave as educators, as adults, as people, reflects on our learners. So guys, we'll try and get your interviews more and more because I want to focus on this a lot. So subscribe. Octane Media, YouTube, Facebook, the Holistic Education Group. Ne? Thank you again to our sponsors, the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. Thank you very much. Subscribe.